Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Jebediah, and today we're going to be checking out Sitka's brand new Bayou Blind Bag. I've had this bag for a little while and I've had a chance to look at it, test it, play with it, evaluate it, but we're gonna go through some of the ins and outs and the highs and lows of what I think is good and bad about this new bag. One of the things I really like about Sitka's brand new bag is that it's fully waterproof and it's got sealed zippers, YKK zippers, high quality zippers, and if you've ever used um, some other waterproof, like duffels or uh, things like that, the zippers tend to stick, be really hard to pull. These ones aren't, they're really smooth, they're really easy, and I really, really, really appreciate that because it makes entry to this bag a lot easier. The thing I also appreciate is the quality of construction. Sitka's known for having high quality gear and you pay the price. That's one of the things with this bag is it's a $300 price tag. When I ordered it and shipped it with taxes and all that stuff, it came out to be over $300. And so some of the things that we talk about you might think I'm being overly critical about, but the reason I'm being picky is because when you pay $300 for a bag, you kind of expect it to be pretty awesome. And the quality, construction, thought, design, all that stuff needs to be on point because otherwise, why pay $300 for a bag? I could just go to any other big box store, pick up some dry bag or some blind bag that's made by some other company, and it could still do the job. But if you're gonna pay that kind of money, you wanna get that kind of product. And so. Just be aware, I'm being probably picky, overly picky, but that's what happens when you pay $300 for a bag. So, like I said, really like the zippers, really like the construction, I like that it's waterproof. If you're like me and you hunt outdoors, and a lot of times it's not exactly the best weather, those are usually the best days, this bag is fully waterproof, which I really, really like. That's actually the reason I bought it, is I was in the market for a new bag after hunting with my old one for a couple years, and that's the thing that stood out for me from the get-go. The other thing I like about this bag is it's a backpack. It's not a sling style pack. It's not you know, a bag that you have to carry or like loop over your shoulder or anything like that. It's a regular style put over your shoulder backpack. But one of the downsides of that is the design of the bag is not comfortable. The bag itself hangs off your back. It's also weirdly shaped, kind of top heavy and the straps themselves kind of cut into your traps. They're not necessarily, it doesn't look like they're molded for a human body. The other thing I don't like about the straps is they don't tuck away. And when you look at the pictures either on Sitka's website or other retailers, um, it almost looks like the straps should be able to be detached or tuck away and they don't. So when it came in the mail today, I was really disappointed about that because I tend to use my bag as a regular bag, not only as a backpack, but a regular bag. It has handles on it, which are great, but there's no way to get rid of those straps. So you're always gonna be messing with them. They're gonna get caught on things. They're gonna get in the way. And I actually don't like that. I really don't like that. And the straps themselves aren't even that comfortable. So when that bag's fully loaded and I loaded mine up earlier today, it didn't feel great on my shoulders. Now, when you're hunting and stuff, you're gonna have extra padding with layers. But again, for a $300 bag, I expect it will be a little bit more comfortable on the walks in and walks out of wherever you're tapping to hunt that day. So aside from the straps, one of the other things in my mind that just doesn't quite make sense with the layout of this bag is the interior compartments. You'll see that as you put the bag down and open it up, the natural way that I would put a backpack down is I would put it strap side down. The largest surface area goes on the ground or goes on the table or whatever. But this bag is inverted and upside down. You actually have to place it kind of backside down, if that makes sense. Um, and so when you open it, if you don't do that right, when you open it, everything will spill out of your bag. And also the layout of the compartments is curious. There's a large compartment, two middle compartments that are smaller, and then another large compartment at the top. And as I loaded this up today, again, it tended to be top heavy um, because that large compartment at the top is wanting to pull that bag off of your back, not making it feel very great. The other thing is the compartments themselves can be adjusted or it looks like they should be able to be adjusted, but they actually can't. The middle compartment, you can undo the Velcro and fold that down to make it one large compartment instead of two smaller ones. But there's no other way to configure those other ones. Even though you can undo the Velcro, you can't fold those flaps down because of the design and shape of the bag, which I don't even know why then at that point, they made the bag be able to be taken down. The other thing I don't like about this bag is with other bags I've had in the past, those compartments can be fully removed. 
So those sections and those those ways of dividing up those dividers, that's a better way of saying it, can be completely taken out. This bag, you can't do that. It's all permanently sewn in there. So aside from that, that middle compartment that can fold flat and make one large one instead of two small ones, this bag isn't really configurable. The other thing that's curious about it is the material that they chose to use on the other side with these zippers. And it, it, it looks cheap to me. I know it's probably not, but it just does the way it, I can't imagine even the shape of some of those compartments. I don't know what I'm gonna put in there or what I would store in that kind of odd shape. I think overall, it's a high quality bag. You can tell it's gonna be durable. You can tell, I can tell it's made to last. But there are some weird design things with this bag that I think for me just make it unusable in a lot of ways. I, probably this thing is gonna find its way onto the shelf and stay there for a very long time. Now, if you're like me and you own a lot of Sika gear and you like what they kind of do, you're gonna be, a, it's appealing to get a bag like this. And like I said, one of the draws for me wasn't only that it was waterproof and that it's a backpack. It was even the pattern that it comes in, the Sitka Optifade. And I have a lot of, all my other gear is that same pattern. It appealed to me to be able to kind of match everything. My dog's going crazy right now. Um, but is it worth $300? I don't think so. And I really, really, really wanted to like this bag. I, like, I can't even begin to tell you. I was, I was on the email list for when it came back in stock. I, I was searching every day, checking to make sure whether it was in inventory or not. I really, really wanted to like it, and I just don't, which is surprising. Because up until this point, I've loved everything else Sitka has done. I feel like this one, they just swung on and missed big time. And most of that came down to just the design, the, the comfortability of the straps, the internal compartments being weird, and I can't get over that. And so I hope this review was helpful for you. Maybe this bag is right for you. Maybe you have different needs than I have. Maybe you're not as picky as me. Maybe there's something that you really think you'll get out of this bag that I'm totally missing on. And that might be true. So make sure you can check them out at your local stores or online. And hopefully this review was helpful for you as you make that decision with whether or not you're gonna buy a Sitka's brand new Bayou blind bag. That's it. Thanks for watching.